Hi everyone, I'm Matthew Monas of Mobile Syrup, and today Apple had a major event where they announced a few new products along with some nice updates to iOS 9. The event started off with Tim Cook announcing that more than 1 billion Apple devices are used worldwide. That's a lot of devices. If the US government wins the battle over encryption, it could mean a backdoor into Apple's products. Tim Cook took the time to rally support by asking the nation to decide how much power the government should really have over your data. Next up, Lisa Jackson then took the stage to talk about Apple's energy initiative and to announce that 93% of Apple's facilities run on renewable energy. Apple has created solar farms in China and solar panels on rooftops in Singapore to support all Apple stores and offices. Tim Cook has been outspoken about climate changes in the past and hopes to have other companies follow suit. Next up, COO Jeff Williams talked about advancements to ResearchKit. With over tens of thousands of people signing up, researchers have learned of new insights specifically with diabetes and autism. Crowdsourcing health data has provided the medical field with valuable information. But that wasn't the only health-related announcement. There's now a new API called CareKit. It tracks your symptoms and you can use the accelerometer to test a range of motion. The data can then be shared with your doctor who can update your care plan data right on the spot. CareKit is open source and will launch in April. Now, Apple Watch fans will now have three new styles of bands to choose from. The first one is a woven nylon band that comes in a variety of vibrant colors. The second is four new leather bands. And finally, a black Melanese band. The Apple Watch also got a price drop and can be bought for $300 US or $400 Canadian. Apple TV is getting another update to tvOS 9.2 and it's bringing along with some new features. The best of the bunch is Siri voice dictation, letting you speak directly to the search app store or enter your passwords instead of using the on-screen keyboard. tvOS 9.2 also adds iCloud photo library, letting you access all of the images you've uploaded to Apple's cloud from your iDevices. Support for Bluetooth keyboards, the ability to recognize apps inside folders, and the addition of a podcast app are now making its way in the big update. The update is available to download starting today. Finally, the rumored iPhone 5 SE was announced, which is actually pronounced SA. It will be four inches, look almost exactly like an iPhone 5S, but be as powerful as an iPhone 6S. It has a 64-bit A9 processor and the M9 motion coprocessor. It will have Touch ID, support Hey Siri, come with a 12 megapixel camera, retina flash, and be able to shoot 4K video. The iPhone 5S it will cost $400 US or $580 Canadian. It can be pre-ordered on March 24th and available on March 31st. Next up is iOS 9 and Tim Cook made a point to let everyone know that it's now running on 80% of devices compared to Android's Marshmallow, which is only running on 2%. iOS 9.3 will include a new night shift mode which reduces the blue light to help sleep, notes will have touch ID or a passcode, and news is getting top stories or editor's pick. CarPlay received some new enhancements and HealthKit now works with the Apple Watch. Finally, the last announcement was the rumored smaller iPad Pro. It's going to be the same size as the iPad Air 2 at 9.7 inches, use the same materials as the bigger iPad Pro, while being 40% less reflective than the iPad Air 2. It's going to use Apple's A9X chip, an integrated M9 coprocessor, and support the Apple Pencil. A 12 megapixel iSight camera will be on the back with True Tone Flash, and users will be able to take live photos. Oh, and it'll also be able to shoot 4K video. Apple also announced a new feature called True Tone Display that measures the color temperature of ambient light and adjusts the display to match the environment. This will give the user more accurate white balance when viewing the screen. The iPad Pro will come in four finishes, silver, gold, space gray, and rose gold. The entry model has 32 gigabytes and starts at $600 US or $800 Canadian. Apple also introduced a 256 gigabyte version of both iPad Pros and just like the new iPhone, it will be available for pre-order on March 24th and released on March 31st. So that pretty much sums up the entire Apple event. This will also be the last product announcement at the current Apple headquarters at One Infinite Loop. In 2017, they will be moving to the new campus. So what do you guys think of all these announcements? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And as always, don't forget to visit us at www.mobilesyrup.com.